Hello scouts, it's Mr. Kugler. We're back around the fire pit today. We're gonna make some great chili stew. And I have to admit, these videos are causing me to reach outside of my comfort zone a little bit and try some new recipes and mix it up a little bit. And I figured if I'm gonna get a chili recipe, where else would I go but Texas to get some chili recipe? So for my recipe, I went to none other than the Texas Treasury Dutch Oven Cooking Cookbook. And this is put together by the Lone Star Dutch Oven Society. And like I said, if I'm gonna go someplace to get a chili recipe, that's where I'm going. And this one's a little interesting because not only does it include all the normal suspects that you'd expect to have in chili, but it also includes some apple and uh, even some cocoa powder, unsweetened, and some cinnamon. So not quite your normal ingredients for a chili. I'm confident this is gonna be one amazing chili. So let me move some of this stuff out of the way and we'll get started making this delicious chili. So the first step in making our Texas chili is to mince up some garlic, three cloves. We're also going to chop up, finally, about two and a half cups of onions. So I've got four here, maybe a little bit more than we need. And the other thing we'll be doing is we're gonna to need to get some heat in the location where our Dutch oven is going to be. And what I may do is, so it doesn't get too hot to start with, I'm gonna add some of those coals there. Uh, truth be known, my fire bed here, uh, we've had some melting snow recently. So I just wanna make sure that it's totally dry. And by putting some coals on there, that'll get that ground prepared. So let me get some gloves on. I'm gonna move this Dutch oven and we'll get a bed of coals uh, where the Dutch oven ultimately will go. It's always important to keep your cooking fire going and make sure you have an ample amount of coals. So I'm just gonna add a little extra wood to the fire. With my Dutch oven lid off, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil into the bottom of this Dutch oven just so I can make sure nothing uh, gets burnt as I get going uh, browning the beef. I've got some lean beef here so it doesn't have a lot of fat in it so I wanna be able to compensate for that a little bit. Start first with the garlic. The shucks off my garlic, I'll give it a nice fine chop. Then I give it a little crush. I'll just take and add this to my Dutch oven. Now I'll start preparing my onions. And as I get each of my onions chopped, I'll add it to my Dutch oven. So I'm checking out the amount of onions that these three onions that I've cut have produced, and I think I'm at the two and a half cup marks, so I'm going to be holding off on my last onion, and I'll just add my last of the three onions that I chopped finally into my Dutch oven. So 
So with all the onions in my Dutch oven, I'm going to take and I'm going to add this onto the heat. My Dutch oven is cool so I can reach and touch it. Just going to put that on that bed of coals that I had drying off our bed. So I'll keep an eye on the heat as the Dutch oven comes up to temperature and as it starts cooking the onions and the beef. Uh, and I may have to back off some of the heat, but we'll be able to keep an eye on that and adjust it as we need. So what I'll do now is I'm going to add a pound and a half of ground beef. As I mentioned, I'm using lean ground beef. And, uh, and that's part of the reason why I used a little bit of the olive oil in there originally, just to help my onions and the uh, garlic just start cooking up a little bit. I'm going to take with a spatula and just move those around a little bit before I add the beef. Now I'll add the beef. Then we'll take and mix the beef in with the onions and the garlic. So we'll keep an eye on our beef, make sure we keep stirring it so it doesn't burn or that garlic doesn't burn. Keep an eye on the temperature and adjust it where necessary and we'll get ready to start prepping some of our other ingredients. So the next step is to take three of these green bell peppers and cut them up. Now you can use yellow or red. I went green because they were tying in with Thrifty, the most inexpensive out of the different colors of peppers. So I'm just gonna take, cut the top off, cut the bottom. Then I'm going to make one cut here and I'm just going to come through here and just get rid of the insides. And I'll take the top and I'm just going to cut to get the stem. Now all I have is that little piece left and I'll start first by chopping those finely. Every time I get a pepper done, I'll put it in this bowl over here. And go on to my next pepper. Now, at home, before I came out to the campsite, I washed these peppers just to make sure they were clean. Uh, that's a great tip to do ahead of time, put them in a clean bag so you don't have to worry about doing it in the field. That's the last of my three peppers. Now certainly at home, what you could have done is chopped up your onions and your peppers and your garlic ahead of time so that they were ready for when you got out at your campsite and you didn't have to go through the process of doing it here. Now one of the other things, if you're cooking as a patrol, you wouldn't have to be doing double duty like I'm doing. So one scout could be down cooking the ground beef and browning that. We're trying to get it so it's no longer pink in the middle. And uh, the other scouts could be working on prepping the vegetables and all. So let me go give my ground beef an additional stir. I've been stirring it in between while I've been cutting the peppers and just see how it's doing browning up. So we're almost there on our ground beef. It's still got a lot of pink in the middle, uh, but it is starting to brown up. So we'll get working on other parts of our Texas stew. So next, we're gonna be using some hot chili peppers. And this is a 16 ounce jar. I'm gonna need half of it. I need eight ounces. 
So I'm going to remove them from the liquid within the jar and just cut off the stems and finally dice these hot peppers and put them in with our green bell peppers. And these gloves are great ideas when you're handling the hot peppers. You just want to make sure you're not touching your eyes or anything. Certainly if your patrol isn't into hot foods or spicy foods, you can even back off on the hot peppers. So the next thing to do is to chop up our apples. I'll start first by removing the core. Give it a nice chop and put it in with our peppers. So I'll add my second apple. So now I'll start with our seasonings that I'm going to add right on top of our peppers here and apples so that they all go in the pot together. I'm going to start off with two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. Next, I'm going to move on to three tablespoons of chili powder. Notice I'm pouring over my cutting board with the chili powder, so if I have an accident and it dumps out, that I don't have too much in my dish. Now we're going to have one tablespoon of curry powder. Now what I would recommend is that you mix up these ingredients at home in a Ziploc bag and don't mix them out here. Have them ready to go in a pouch so you don't have to worry about forgetting something. And then we're just going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon. So with all my seasonings portioned out, I'm going to take and start adding everything to the Dutch oven. And the next parts are a little simpler. We're going to add a, uh, this is a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. I'm going to add it with the juices from the tomato. I have a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, unseasoned. And then I have a 14 and a half ounce can of chicken broth. And we're going to add all this right into our Dutch oven and then get it back on the heat. Now 
Now our chicken broth. Our canned diced tomatoes. And our tomato sauce. Check my heat. That could use a refresh. Before I refresh the coals, I took and put the lid on so I don't get ash and, and all in my, uh, my meals. So I'll take and put some coals off to the side here. Check my temperature. Now I'll take and just mix these ingredients together. So now we're going to let that come up to temperature, all those ingredients that we just put in there that were air temperature, and let them come up, up to full temperature. And when they start bubbling a little, along a little bit, we know we're ready to start simmering. So that took about 10, 15 minutes. Our, all our ingredients are nice bubbly hot. So now we're going to give it one last stir. We're going to put the lid on it, check the bottom heat, maybe back off of that a little bit, and then add some heat to the top and start some simmering. I figure we're going to go, as the recipe calls, for about an hour of simmering, uh, where it's going to be, uh, you know, around 325, around 300, uh, just simmering uh, and cooking through and making all those veggies and everything nice and soft. Put our lid on, give it a stir to make sure that it is seated properly. Take my glove off, I'm going to come in, yeah, that's a little hot, so I'm going to take some of the heat off. Come back in and check it. Put our Dutch oven back on. Now we'll add a little bit of top heat. So let this simmer for about an hour. I'll keep an eye on the heat, make sure that it's at the right level, replenish as necessary. If I have to, I've got this brush here where I could clean off the excess ash off the top and uh, periodically give it a stir and uh, I'll see you in about an hour. So all my chili is simmering. I'm gonna take three quarters of a cup of almonds and I'm going to try to sliver them. You could buy them uh, as they call it slivered almonds, but they're a little expensive, and I had a big bag of almonds in the house. So I'm going to take and sliver these up or slice them up, put them in the bowl so we can add them as one of the final garnishes to our dish. It's important to be very careful and not get cut doing this. This is another thing that could be done at home ahead of time. Every so often I'll come in and give this a stir.
I also want to be mindful of the fact that I'm getting heat off the fire on that far side of that Dutch oven. So I definitely want to be stirring this around as I'm cooking because that's going to be hotter than this other side over here. So an hour of simmering is just about upon us. Just spin it a couple times because I got the heat from the fire, added some more coals after brushing off the top and kept my fire stoked with wood. Uh, and it's, it's smelling delicious. So we've got two last things to add, those slivered almonds, and then we're gonna use some red uh, kidney beans uh, that we're gonna take and I'm going to drain these and then I'm going to rinse them. So let's get started with that. Just try to keep the lid on here just so all the beans stay in when I go to drain and I've got a gray water bucket over next to my cook station here. Now I'll carefully pull up this lid. And I have some water. And go dump this out. So now we're going to go in and we'll remove our lid, give it a stir, add our last ingredients, bring those up to temperature. Give that a stir. Add our almonds. Now we'll add our 15 and a half ounce can of red kidney beans. Give it another stir to incorporate this all. Now we'll put the lid back on and give this about 10 minutes or so to come up to fully temp and then we'll give it the old taste test. Well, Scouts, I've been stirring it and I gotta tell you, it, it smells amazing. And as you could tell from the sun in my eyes, that sun is starting to go down. And I think, I think it's time to test this uh, chili and see what it tastes like. So I've got my bowl ready. I've got a fresh spoon. Let's go in and uh, grab a scoop of this or two. Ah, oh, that looks amazing. Now, I think the only thing that can make this chili better is a little mild cheddar cheese on the top. So let's add a little bit of that while it's hot. It's already starting to melt up. So now is the moment of truth. Now, I don't like a lot of heat, but I gotta tell you, this is delicious. I can taste those hot chili peppers, but it's not overpowering. As I mentioned, you could certainly back off of those if you don't like it, or even back off of some of the uh, chili powder. Uh, but this is absolutely delicious. You can, you can taste the sweetness from the apples a little in there, balances it nicely. Then you've got the peppers and those kidney beans and quite a delicious dish here. Definitely a different type of chili that'll be wowing all the other campers in your campsite when you produce this uh, great chili. So thank you to our friends at the Lone Star Dutch Oven Society down in Texas for putting this great chili recipe in their cookbook. I hope this chili recipe inspires you to go out with your troop and try some different recipes and some different cooking methods. So I hope you have an opportunity to get out in the great outdoors and enjoy yourself.